Hello, Brigadiers and Brigadettes. Welcome, Blue Jackets fans and hockey fans alike. I am your captain speaking. Welcome to the podcast, and let's dive into some hockey content. Hello, everyone. Let's see what we're going to do here today. And we are going to be talking about the Boston Bruins. Yes, but first I wanted to say, if you are new to my channel, I guess, please subscribe. I triple dog dare you. And if you don't, I'm going to be salty and so sad and mad and angry at you. But anyway, in all seriousness, if you want to listen to some hockey content, and I'm not going to say I'm an expert by any means, but I know a thing or two about hockey, I think that you should definitely subscribe to my channel. I upload three times a week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Sundays. Won't be this Sunday, or this Thursday though, because of Thanksgiving, but regardless, I'm pretty consistent. Now with that being said, let's talk about my three questions for the Boston Bruins. Number one. Can this team survive injuries? This team has been plagued by injuries in this offseason. The Bruins are going to have to figure out how to play well without some star players. Brad Marchand um, will be out until the end of January because of a sports hernia. You're not coming back early from a hernia. Um, if you're, I don't know if women can get hernias, probably. But if you're a guy, um, you, I, you're just not. And you're not going to risk it for the biscuit. David Pasternak won't be back until sometime in mid-February because he had hip surgery. We already knew this. I think it's going to be up to Bergeron and the boys to provide some offense. So you're going to need some, maybe not necessarily unproven, but younger players to step up and provide um, some offense, but just take on bigger roles for this team in order to keep it going early. So who are these younger players? Well, they are Jake DeBrusque, 24-year-old Jake DeBrusque, and 25-year-old Andre Kasha. So... DeBrusque is coming off three very good seasons to start his career, and in his past two seasons, they've been very impressive, to me at least. 2018-19 season, 27 goals, 15 assists, 42 points in 68 games, 0.62 points per game. 2019-20 season, 19 goals, 19 assists, 30, no, 16 assists, ooh, I knew my math was wrong, 35 points in 65 games played, 0.54 points per game. Say that three times fast. I think it's a good goal for DeBrusque to get 50 points this year, especially since he'll more than likely be handed like a nice contract. So I think that for DeBrusque, he should be able to step up, especially with Pasta and the Rat being out for, you know, probably about a month for a normal season. Sorry, I got to itch my nose here. But I think 50 points, that should be a good goal. That should be a lower goal. I think he should aim higher, maybe 60, 65 points. But 50, I expect that. Now we're going to talk about Andre Kasha. And Kasha is a RFA. He's 25. For some reason, everybody seems to think of him as an older player. And I don't know why that is. Anytime I talk to somebody, they act like he's 33 or something like that. But he's 25. Andre Kasha is an RFA that's dealt with injuries over the course of his career. And I really think that they should take advantage of the opportunities with him. Especially since he's going to probably be playing pretty hard this year since he's an RFA. He's had injuries, but I think he's proven that he can play well. And... My thing is, can he have a healthy, injury-free season? We'll see, but let's take a look at his past three seasons with the, well, not the Bruins, but the Ducks and the Bruins. 2017-18, 20 goals, 18 assists, 38 points in 66 games played, 0.58 points per game. Probably his best season in terms of total points. I know he hasn't hit 20 goals besides that season. 2018-19, 11 goals, 9 assists, 20 points in 30 games played. 0.67 0.67 points per game, very good season, even though it was short, you know, injury riddled season. 2019 20, 7 goals, 17 assists, 24 points in 55 games played, 0.43 points per game. Now, obviously, there's been some times that he hasn't played well and he's dealt with injuries, but he's 25 and I see some potential in him. And I think anything less than a 40 point season for Kasha would be a major disappointment. So, 40 points, I think, should be the bare minimum for him. Now, moving on, question number two Can Tuka Rask and Yaroslav Halak? Start where they left off last season. Rask is 33 and Halak is 35. In a sport that's very much a young man's game, um, I just look at it as these two are proving doubters wrong and they're playing well at an old age. However, one has to consider the fact that Rask is mulling considering retirement and then Yaroslav Halak is about as old as, you know, they come for goalies and really position players as well. Or, you know, players that aren't goalies, forwards, defensemen, you know. But can they put it all together and have a strong season? 
for the Bruins. One last time, one last two roll for these two. Yes, this team is too talented to not have the goaltending perform at a high level. It's a team game, and this team is one of the most talented in the league. I know they're dealing with injuries. Even Charlie McAvoy could be dealing with an injury to start the season. We'll see. But I think both goalies will play well enough to allow the Bruins to, con to contend. One thing I wanted to mention real quick is the Bruins do have a goalie prospect, Jeremy Swayman. He won the Mike Richter Award, which goes to the best D1 goalie in NCAA hockey. NCAA, NCAA, I call it NCAA. So the Bruins might have a young stud in the making in front of them. So for the people that are worried about the youth for the Bruins in net, Jeremy Swayman could be the guy. He plays in Maine, I believe. He had like a 2.05 goals against average uh, last year. He's a good young goalie. He's ranked as their like fourth best prospect according to NHL.com. He's young. They could use some young talent, especially in net. Because they've had pretty consistent goaltending, you know, past decade, decade and a half-ish. Probably decade to play it safe. But they could use a young player. And I think that's where they could go with him. So Jeremy Swayman, keep an eye out for him. You never know. Goalies are hard to predict. Now number three, the third question I have is, will who will step up for the Bruins this season besides the younger players I already mentioned? There's two names that stick out to me, and that's Craig Smith and Matt Grizzlick. If I said his name right, I think I did. Matt Grizzlick. It's a weird spelling. Craig Smith came over in free agency on a three-year, $9.3 million deal. I'm thinking that could be a steal. He's a solid two-way player that can provide some scoring. And had this season not been canceled, he would have, you know, scored 20 goals easily. That would have been his sixth season, or sixth 20-plus goal season out of his past seven. The Bruins did add him on purpose. This was not an accident. This is a depth piece that is a good player, good two-way player. This shows they still want to contend, you know. They got him on a good contract as well. This is a huge move for them because I think Craig Smith could be a huge part of this team, especially in the playoffs on a deep playoff run. If you want to hang with the big dogs, you got to be able to have depth. And this year, they weren't able to hang with Tampa Bay. So this Craig Smith signing, I'm pretty excited for it. I think it'll be a good move. I think that he can play on the PK. He can play on the power play. He is a good player, so great signing by them. And he can really just do it all. Now we have Matt Grizzlick. Grizzlick, on the other hand, has only ever played for the Bruins. But he's been a good player. The Bruins rewarded him with a four-year, $14.75 million deal. And Grizzlick is going to be a top-two defenseman for them. He's going to fill that role since Tory Crew left in free agency. So Matt Grizzlick will have plenty of opportunities to show what he's made of. Matt may not provide as much offense as Krug off the blue line, but he's a better defensive player. And I think he should pair well with Charlie McAvoy. Since Matt's younger, I think they're going to ride him pretty hard and try to keep him out there on the ice as long as possible. I think that the Bruins obviously managed to keep him at a deal that I thought was good. And, you know, the offense, I don't think it'll ever be... I don't think it'll be like a 40-50 point goal score, or not goal score, but 40-50 point, you know, type guy on the blue line. But I think defensively he provides, you know, what you need for the Bruins. And then if he could get... 30, 35 points per season for the Bruins. Who knows? Maybe he could get 40 points. I'm definitely not saying 50, but I could be wrong. Either way, I think these two guys, Craig Smith, Matt Grizzlick, could be huge for the Bruins. I think there's a lot of guys not named Pasternak, Marchand, Bergeron that could play huge roles for this team. And I think out of those four that I mentioned with Kasha, DeBrusque, Smith, Grizzlick, those four could be the biggest outside of those top three names. Obviously, besides like Yaroslav Halak and Tuka Rask. But anyway, those are the three questions for today. Everybody, stay safe, stay away from COVID, have a great week. Goodbye, Brigadiers and Brigadettes and hockey fans in general. This is your captain signing off. Have a great week.